maroon is something you can't get it. You have to earn it. In the army fraternity, the symbol maroon, if you're wearing a maroon, maroon is the color of airborne forces all over the world. So if you're wearing a maroon, you don't have to speak for yourself because it speaks volumes about what you are and what you are capable of doing. Making facts sound stranger than fiction. That is probably the best way to describe the job profile of the Indian Army's paratroopers. These men belong to the elite airborne forces of the Indian Army. They get dropped behind enemy lines to destroy strategic targets. These combat paratroopers are a crack force, working tirelessly to defang the enemy before he can bite. Good. The para forces have been, you know, denoted by a famous adage, men apart every man and emperor. This was picked up, or rather, this was to denote the heroics of the paratroopers during the World War II. The paratroopers can go down behind enemy lines and change the face of battle. During wartime operations, these elite troops of the parachute regiment clear the way for the infantry and other land forces to march forward by weakening enemy defenses in advance. These paratroopers can operate at any time of the day or night. Most of their operations are clandestine in nature. These airborne forces have played a pivotal role during all the wars fought by the Indian Army. During Operation Vijay in Kargil in 1999, the paratroopers were instrumental in clearing the Mushko Valley and Batalik sector by getting rid of the foreign infiltrators. In addition to combat roles, the airborne forces are engaged in a variety of tasks, including combat, search and rescue operations, counterinsurgency actions, sabotaging enemy's communication systems, and responding to emergencies that include terror threats from armed insurgents and cross-border terrorists. The paratroopers, which are a part of the Indian Army's airborne forces, are ready action troops. These are inserted in action zones using various means, including heliborne insertions, slithering, ground vehicles, and military freefall techniques like Halo, that is high altitude, low opening, and Haho, meaning high altitude, high opening. These techniques are used by paratroopers to deliver personnel, equipment and supplies from a transport aircraft with little or no enemy detection. The paratroopers are highly self-sufficient and capable of lifting and airdropping weapons and vehicles straight into the scene of action. An artillery element is integral to these airborne warriors who carry Indian light field gun as part of their arsenal. Within minutes of being airdropped, the paratroopers quickly place the gun in firing position. In addition to their highly specialized combat and survival skills, the paratroopers also get to use some highly sophisticated weapon systems. Armed with advanced GPS-based navigation equipment, including GPS watches, radio and satellite communication sets, the Indian Army paratroopers count amongst some of the best airborne forces in the world. How does the Indian Army get hold of these men? Men who know no fear, men who can attack with the stealth of a cheetah, and men who take pride in living under the shadow of death 24-7. Paratroopers, both men and officers, are elite and special. And they've got to be very physically and mentally tough. All these paratroopers are volunteers. That is, they become paratroopers out of their own choice. In the academy, there were officers from the parachute regiment and uh, I always considered them as a role model. Something told me that they are a little different from the others. To be considered fit for wearing the maroon beret, a soldier has to be comparatively young, physically fit, mentally tough, intelligent and motivated with an ability to innovate. 
Officers from all the arms and services can join the parachute regiment. All paratroopers compulsorily go through a 90-day probationary period, during which they are subjected to a wide range of physical and mental endurance tests. These include advanced battle proficiency tests, speed marches, and route marches up to 70 kilometers at one go. Route march, as uh, the saying in army goes, it's all mental. When you're running a route march with uh, 22 kilos of weight and you're running for 60 odd kilometers, then it is bound to happen that your ankles give out, your knee gives out. There is a tussle going on between your mind and your heart that should you give up or should you not. And that is where I would say your temperament to carry on in spite of all odds come into play. A person just by his sheer physical strength cannot run 60 to 70 kilometers with such a weight. Their minds and bodies are stretched beyond their limits. They also hone their skills in navigation, medical rescues, demolition handling, and rock craft. All these assume significance, considering that a paratrooper may have to opt for near impossible routes to reach the enemy and evacuate his bodies injured in action. The paratroopers also get special inputs on conducting ambushes and raids on terrorist dens in populated areas. They train to achieve mastery in both conventional as well as unconventional warfare. Not everyone manages to clear the probation period. The average rejection rate hovers between 70% and 80%. The ones who fail to impress their instructors are repatriated to their parent units. Only those found up to the mark are sent for special para training. These men also go through highly specialized training modules at various other army institutions in India. The Indian Air Force's Paratroopers Training School, or PTS, in Agra, in North India, is one such institution. Here they attend a 28-day para-basic course where they get to learn the art of slithering and para-jumping in a variety of conditions. They also attend a compact free-fall course with and without oxygen systems. Those who develop cold feet at the 11th hour are declared unfit for becoming a paratrooper and are sent back to their parent units. To qualify for wearing these para wings and the maroon beret, each of the trainees must make five successful static line para jumps from various heights. These include night jumps and jumps with full battle load. Since these airborne forces work in comparatively smaller teams, the paratroopers must have loads of empathy for their buddies and also possess superior leadership qualities. We need to gel with our troops. Only if we can gel with them, they will listen to me. So basically it's uh, gaining their trust and making them believe that yes, I can lead you into a successful operation. The Airborne Brotherhood, cutting across arms and services, the color of your lanyard, we all are brothers. So this is well known in the army that the Airborne is one. Marooning, the ceremonial granting of the Parachute Regiment's signature Maroon Beret is an event that all the trainees eagerly look forward to. Wearing this cap defines their elite forces identity. For Captain Dipankar Baruatu, marooning was a life-changing experience, but in an entirely different way and for an entirely different reason. Initially, when they told me that I didn't make it, I was very disappointed. Whatever I have seen of you, you are a very good officer. Okay, you have performed quite okay in your probation, but uh, after speaking to people, I think there is some shortcoming, you know, you didn't gel with the team. So it doesn't matter, look after yourself, take care. Now you go back to your parent battalion. So take care and uh, wish you all the best for your career ahead in the army. When Captain Shiv Shankar was taking me out and maybe uh, I was to board the gypsy and go to the railway station, uh, this feeling was going on inside me that uh, am I not capable enough? Superiors do play such pranks from time to time. 
After all, shocks and surprises are integral to a paratrooper's life. Captain Aswal came and told me that uh, I didn't clear my mess bill. And what about your mess bill? Have you cleared it? No, sir. Please come along and clear your mess bill first. It was like a last nail in the coffin that uh, once you're not selected and then you're again going back to clear your mess bill. But then when I went inside to my shock and surprise, you know, people were waiting, holding that maroon beret. And it was like, I've done it. In the true paratrooper tradition, Captain Dipankar is made to wear his maroon beret dipped in his drink. Yes, his drink. Without this, his baptism into the airborne forces remains incomplete.